Okay, today we're going to talk about bloody battlefields. This is uh, the lesson where we're going to be talking about uh, the major battles of the Civil War. And we're really only going to discuss three of them, uh, although Fort Sumter, we should remember, is the beginning of the Civil War that occurred in South Carolina. And we can see that in our map in our workbook. Um, Fort Sumter is right here in South Carolina. And um, also, we should remember over 600,000 people uh, died in the Civil War, making it by far the bloodiest um, American war. And that has to do with we fought on both sides. Usually when we fight a war, there were, you know, people that are dying, usually at least half of them are from another country. So we don't count them. But here we count both sides. So. Um, over 300,000 Union soldiers died, and about 300,000 soldiers in the Confederacy died. So uh, let's take a look at the types of strategies that uh, that were used during the Civil War. First, the uh, control of the waterways. This is something that has always been used, especially if you got a strong navy. The Union had all the, the naval ships. The Confederates had to start from scratch. And um, so the Union used their navy to uh, surround basically uh, the Confederacy. They blockaded ports like Charleston, Savannah, New Orleans, and then they would go up the Mississippi River and we'll talk about the uh, major battle of Vicksburg, the siege of Vicksburg here, uh, to sever the Mississippi River. And we could see that in this, uh, this map right here. You can see a lot of battles going up the Mississippi River um, trying to secure that very important river. You can see, again, we talked about it quite a bit, that a lot of commerce goes up and down the Mississippi River, goes to the Missouri River, the Ohio River, a lot of activity going through this uh, Mississippi. It also, if you're able to control it as a union, you can sever the states of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas from the rest of the Confederacy. So it, it will split it in two, which um, makes it easier for the union to deal with the armies, because the armies over here can't get over here and vice versa. So you can hold off one army and then attack the others. Okay, So uh, control of the waterways was very, very important uh, in the Civil War, and the Union used it to great effectiveness. Uh, one other thing about the uh, blockades, uh, remember a lot of the crops in the South are cash crops, and they need to trade it to places like Great Britain to get their money to buy more weapons or make more weapons get the materials so that they can fight the war. And if they can't trade, they are going, as we remember in previous lesson, their economy suffers massively and they can't even get enough clothes for their soldiers, let alone bullets and rifles. So um, the blocking the waterways was a crucial element uh, for the Union winning the war. Another uh, strategy that they used was control of the capital cities. The capital cities are in Washington, D.C., right here between Virginia and Maryland, and Richmond, which is right here in almost the middle of Virginia. Now, capturing the capital city is not a game winner all the time. I would imagine that if the Confederacy ca uh, captured Washington, D.C., then they would have won. The Union catching, capturing Richmond would have hurt the Confederacy a great deal, but I think just like us in the, the Revolutionary War, when the British took over our capital, which was then in Philadelphia. Didn't make much of a difference. We didn't, weren't that organized. Confederacy is a little bit more organized than, than we were. Uh, they have a stronger central government than what we had going with the Articles of Confederation. However, to take Richmond would most likely knock Virginia out of the war. And one of their biggest, most powerful states, if Virginia was not able to fight anymore, the Confederacy would probably fall soon after. So it was a very important uh, city to, to maintain. And as we can see on the battles, look at all these dots, all these battles that took place between the two capitals and around the two capitals. A lot of attention was placed in this one little area here between the two capitals and around the two capitals. Um, so our first battle of Manassas will be one of those types of battles. Oh, let me uh, just finish. Control of the high ground. Okay, so Having the high ground is very important. I pulled this up, uh, the importance of high ground. I know a lot of people play video games, uh, but it, it shows right here the advantages of high ground is that you have a better firing angle, um, you have better cover, you can observe your opponents more easily. I know it's a video game, but it, it, you know they hold true in warfare. 
uh, especially if you think about, uh, you know, if you're playing football, let's say, and one team's end zone is higher than the others, and they're running downhill on a kickoff, they're going to obliterate the team that's down the hill. You know, it's, it's so much better to be up the hill and running down it than running up it. I mean, just go ahead and run up a hill and see how much easier it is running back down the hill. So when you're fighting hand-to-hand, -hand, you're charging somebody, um, it's much easier going down the hill. So having the higher ground is very, very important. Um, so let's take a look at the three major battles and which strategy they use. So we got the bull run, the first bull run, which is right here between the two capitals. This is an example of trying to control the capitals. The Union Army crosses over the Potomac, goes and heads towards Richmond uh, to take over the capital of the Confederacy. And the Confederates stopped them. They brought in uh, reinforcements from trains, which was something brand new, uh, to warfare. And with their extra reinforcements, they were able to turn a certain defeat into a victory. So the Confederates win this battle right here, and it's the first major battle. So Fort Sumter is the first battle, but Bull Run, or as they call in the South, First Manassas, uh, because they used uh, towns or cities as naming the battles, whereas the Union used Bull Run was uh, like a creek nearby. They used uh, geographic fe features usually to name their battles. So uh, Bull Run, or First Manassas, goes to the Confederacy, and it's the first major battle of the Civil War. Okay. Then we have Vicksburg. Vicksburg is about... And this was about the capital cities, controlling the capital cities, okay? And we can see that on our map right here between the two capital cities. Uh, the next one is Vicksburg, which is way over here, and that lies right on the Mississippi River. As we can see right here, this is Vicksburg. And so the Union is trying to control, and the last stronghold that the Confederates hold is, is Vicksburg. And when the, uh, the Union Army finally defeats the, arm, the Confederate Army in Vicksburg, the um, the Mississippi is now totally controlled by the Union. So with all their blockading of all the ports, and then now they're blockading the entire Mississippi River. As I said before, the Confederacy is split in two. They can't send troops across the Mississippi, and they can't use the Mississippi for any trading or anything that they need to do. So uh, Mississippi, the waterways, controlling the waterways is uh, what Vicksburg was about. And then we get to Gettysburg. Gettysburg is probably the most famous of all the uh, uh, battles in the Civil War, not because it's the beginning or the end, but it's the turning point. Just like Yorktown was the turning point in the American Revolution, Gettysburg is the turning point of the Civil War. The, the uh, Confederates were winning quite a few battles, especially um, here in the East. West was uh, more going more towards the Union, as obviously we see on the Mississippi, they're able to take it over. But here in Virginia, the uh, Union was not finding success. They were getting defeated again and again and again. And then finally, when we get to Pittsburgh up here in Pennsylvania, uh, because the Confederate Army was doing so well, like, okay, let's go up north and, and see how they do up there. And the Union are able to defeat the Confederates. And this becomes the turning point of the war and the reason why they uh, are able to win is because the Union was able to occupy the high ground. Um, it's a three-day battle, but the Union was constantly on the high ground, and uh, the Confederates had a real tough time getting up all those hills to try to fight the Union forces, and it was just too much. Uh, the Union had a bigger army, they were on higher ground, and there was just too many advantages for the uh, Confederates to win. And so with that, that was a major loss. And with that, things started turning against the uh, Confederacy. And that's when they start losing the war. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you for our final lesson.